I go to the Disney parks every week. I flew across the country to make this video, and these are my favorite things in Disney California Adventure. Hey, ma'am fam, it's Molly, and we are back with another episode of Molly's Favorite Things, the show where I take you around the different theme parks and tell you my favorite thing in every single land. Part of my amazing job is to make a ton of theme park content. I'm also a certified Disney nerd, former cast member, so I have some strong opinions about the best things in every park. So that's why in this series, again, I'm gonna take you around land by land and tell you my favorite thing. It's kind of like Oprah's favorite things, except for at no point should you check under your seat unless maybe you've lost something. The remote could be under there. Today, we are Disney California Adventure, which started as one of the worst parks in Disney history, but it has transformed beautifully into an amazing experience. It's got some beloved lands dedicated to adventures, cars, Pixar. It's absolutely gorgeous out today. I'm so excited. I've got favorite snacks. I've got favorite rides, some kind of underrated favorite things. So let's get to it. We got a lot to do. If you're new to Molly's favorite things, basically the way these episodes work is I mull over the theme park maps and I pour my heart and soul into deciding my favorite thing in each land. Why? I don't know. It would be a lot easier just to make a list of my top nine or 10 favorite things in each theme park, but that's no fun. So it gets a little tricky because there are some lands like Avengers Campus where I basically love everything and it's really hard to pick a favorite. And then there's some lands like Grizzly Peak where the headliner's a water ride. And so it's really hard to pick a favorite for a completely different reason, but that's half the fun. It's basically a theme park tour wrapped with this fun game bow. So let's get to it. Starting things off in our welcome land here at Disney California Adventure. This is Buena Vista Street. Disney California Adventure, when it started, was supposed to be all of California's great travel destinations packed into one place. Because why would you want to go visit the real Golden Gate Bridge or the real wine country when you could just come to a Disney-fied version of it? Luckily, they have changed that. But since the beginning, Buena Vista Street has been dedicated to the 1920s when Walt and Roy Disney packed up their suitcase, moved out to Hollywood, and founded the Walt Disney Company, which this year we're celebrating D100. It's been 100 years since that happened. Like many welcome lands, this is where you're gonna have kind of your general services. This is where you're gonna have your stroller, your ECV rental, guest relations. This is where you're gonna have a lot of merchandise shops. Five and Dime is your big merchandise shop here. You're gonna have a couple of food options like Fiddler, Pfeiffer, and Practical Cafe. Those are named after the three little pigs. That's your Starbucks in this park. You've also got Mortimer's Market, named after Mickey Mouse, his original name that Walt thought up. You've got fruit and different snacks there. You've got Clarabelle's hand scooped ice cream. And then you do have a sit down restaurant in this land is called Carthay Circle. That is named after the theater that Snow White premiered at, Snow White being the first full-length animated feature film. It's a signature restaurant. It's themed to that kind of 20s and 30s Hollywood glamour, and it does have a few touches of Snow White in there as well. This is also where you can often meet the characters. They've got the red car trolley that drives through. They usually have performers doing jazz music. It's a really fun and lively way to welcome you into the park. But what do I pick for Molly's favorite thing? It's actually none of those things. My favorite thing about Buena Vista Street is the detail. As a Disney nerd, as a Disney history buff, the, I love all the nods to things from the founding of the company. Things like calling it Mortimer's Market, which is again, the first name that Walt thought up for Mickey. So I'm gonna point out a couple of them around here, but I did a whole video on the best kept secrets here in Disney California Adventure with more Easter eggs, fun things to look for that if you enjoy this stuff too, you can check that out. But let's go look at a few of my favorites. Up top, or should I say, up top, that joke will make sense in a minute. On this second floor here, you've got a fictional business and it's called iWorks. It would look like it's an optometrist, but it's called iWorks because one of Walt's original animators, the first gentleman along with Walt that drew Mickey was named Ub iWorks. So this is a pun for him, a special shout out to one of Mickey's original artists by having iWorks optometrist. My next favorite one is here at the Atwater Ink and Paint Shop. It's where you can learn to draw. And if you look at who is teaching at the School of Animation, you've got the different instructors, Masters Clark, Larson, Johnston, Thomas, Kimball, Davis, Call, Lounsbury, and Reetherman. These are Walt Disney's nine old men. Those are his original animators that brought to life so many of the classics, Snow White, Bambi, Dumbo, Peter Pan, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty. These are the gentlemen to thank for that. My personal favorite of this group is Mark Davis because he had a sense of humor. He was known as the ladies man because he did Alice and Maleficent, Cinderella. You've got Ollie Johnston and Frank Thomas. They were besties. There's an adorable documentary on Disney Plus called Frank and Ollie about them. But I love that, of course, if you're going to take art lessons here, 
these are who you'd want to take them from. Bulletin boards are always one of my favorite places to find little Easter eggs and nods. And there's one here in Julius Katz that has a bunch of different flyers and things. Uh, my favorite one is Piano Lessons. And you're going to be calling Roger Radcliffe, which may sound familiar if you're a fan of 101 Dalmatians. You've also got down in the corner, you've got Artist Wanted cartoon and wash drawings, First Class Man or Woman, Disney Brothers Studios, Ask for Roy, as in Roy Disney, Walt's brother. So I always love just slowly exploring a park and walking around and looking at signs and things because you're going to most likely find some cool Easter egg or something to look for. Our next land here at Disney California Adventure, Grizzly Peak. Now I'm not going to lie to you, this one was particularly hard for me to figure out what I wanted to do. And that's because the headliner attraction here at Grizzly Peak is a water ride. And if you know me, you probably know I hate water rides. Just not a big fan of wet shoes and underpants in a theme park. But the main water ride here is called Grizzly River Run. It has a 42, 42 inch height requirement and I will give it credit where credit's due. It is more fun than the Disney World equivalent which is Cali River Rapids. It's actually a very long attraction. It's very scenic and beautiful and the drop is actually more of a drop than Cali. So if you like water rides, I do think this is on the more fun scale but I in good nature could never pick a water ride as my favorite thing. Unless I do this in Universal Studios Hollywood. We'll get to that another day. Other attractions here in Grizzly Peak, you've got the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail. It's kind of like a kid's obstacle course, but it's woodsy and nature themed. You can actually meet Raya from Raya and the Last Dragon there, which gives it points and meeting Raya does make my short list. Also here in Grizzly Peak, you've got Soarin', which is normally Soarin' around the world. It originated here as Soarin' over California. It's the same one that they have in Epcot, but it's that wonderful, much beloved attraction where you sit and you hand glide over famous scenes around the world. And the other main thing here in Grizzly Peak is Smoke Jumpers Grill. This is going to be burgers, chicken nuggets, kind of your classic theme park fare. It used to serve a snack sized version of the famous Disneyland Monte Cristo and that would have made my list, but unfortunately they don't serve that anymore. So I was left with a tough decision because there's not as many great hits here in this land for someone that doesn't care for water rides. I do enjoy meeting Raya and of course I love Soarin'. It's a classic, very delightful attraction and it's my mom's favorite ride, but it's the same one we have in Florida, which it's kind of hard for me to pick things that are the same as they are in Walt Disney World because I am very lucky that I get to go to Disney World all the time. And when I come out to California, I like to do more unique things. But then I remembered something important. Sometimes Disney California Adventure throws it old school and they change Soren around the world to the original version of Soren over California. And I just so happen to be here during one of those times. So I don't normally give the win to seasonal overlays, but you know what? We're making up the rules as we go, and the winner here is definitely Soarin' Over California. Soarin' and Soarin' Over California have a 44-0 inch height requirement, and the around the world version that they have at Epcot and here most of the year is when you're gonna soar over beautiful sites such as the Eiffel Tower and the Taj Mahal and the pyramids, but the original version, Soarin' Over California, takes you across the beautiful sites of this state, the Golden Gate Bridge, the orange groves, the mountains, and the smells. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to smell the oranges. I'm so excited. This attraction does get pretty popular, especially when it's the California version. So if you are purchasing Genie Plus, this is a great choice for a lightning lane. Let's go. I'm really excited. Also, as a very fun bonus, whenever I talk about Soarin' out at Epcot, I talk about how it's everyone's mom's favorite attraction. And I mentioned how it's my mom's favorite attraction. And she's a little camera shy, but the day I'm filming this, my mom is here right now. She's right over there and we get to ride the OG Soarin' together. So I'm very excited. Now, as you can see, while the ride itself is the exact same erector set system and the exact same thing you see on screen when it's the regular version, the theme is much different here in DCA. It is themed to the California Aviation so walking through the queue, you see some of the highlights of flight. Fits a lot more in with the Grizzly Peak theme because it's kind of like an airplane hangar. So as a Florida person, it is fun to walk through and see what's different. California is like a hug. It is the most gentle and peaceful and beautiful ride. It's so relaxing. It's the only ride, I say this a lot, but it's the only ride that I've been on 
that no matter how many times I've been on it, people clap when you're done. And I miss Soarin' Over California. I love the smell of the orange groves. I love that they don't use a lot of the CGI transitions, which they use repeatedly in the Around the World version. The only one they really use is the golf ball, and it actually has a hidden Mickey on it. I love when you go over the ocean. I love when you go over the forest and you smell the trees. I also love when you go over people skiing. There's this one guy that jump, makes a jump and then falls, and I just notice him every time. Soarin' Over California, amazing. If you are in Disneyland when that is on, I absolutely recommend it. And also, I'm ready for a new Soarin'. I'm ready for like another version. So hopefully they'll add that soon. They haven't mentioned anything, but I'm putting it out there. I did just notice a detail that I love before we move on to our next land. It says Grizzly Peak Airfield and it's the Mountaineer Lookout. And then right here it says, this watchtower was erected for the dedicated rangers, pilots, and courageous smoke jumpers who serve the people, wildlife, and natural resources of Grizzly Peak. We honor their ongoing achievements in forest conservation and tireless commitment to the preservation of our wilderness. And that's fun because that kind of explains a lot of what you see around Grizzly Peak. You've got the rangers over at the water ride, the pilots would be here at Soren, and then the smoke jumpers like the smoke jumpers grill. But I do really like the theme of this land overall. The vibes are very strong as someone whose family spent many a vacation out in Colorado and out doing kind of whitewater rafting, which is shocking, I'm sure, to hear, and uh, doing some cabin stays and things. That's what it reminds me of. And uh, just, it's, it's a very beautiful land, that's for sure. But we're on to the next. Hooray for Hollywood. Darted back across Buena Vista Street, and now we are in Hollywood land. This cute land is an extension of Buena Vista Street and of course continues to tell the story of Hollywood. Now, I will say, I'm going to get it right out in the open, the attraction I would love to award, Superstar Limo, known as the worst attraction of all time. It was in this land, but unfortunately it's gone, so that can't win today. But its replacement, Monsters, Inc., Mike and Sully to the rescue. The dark ride that puts you through the Monsters, Inc. story does make my shortlist because I love a Disney dark ride. I just think they're classic. And no matter the story, I enjoy going into favorite Pixar and Disney movies. That's the main actual ride in this area, but you've got a couple of other things. For starters, you've got Mickey's Philhar Magic. This is the same as the one in the Magic Kingdom. It is a 3D musical show with scenes from Coco and The Lion King and The Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast. It's great. It's a great way to beat the heat, sit down for a little bit. Everybody enjoys that show. You've also got the Disney Junior Dance Party, again, similar to the one in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Dance Party with some of your favorite Disney Junior characters. I'm definitely not the target audience, but if you've got little ones that enjoy those shows, it is a great way for them to dance and burn off some energy and see some of their favorite characters. You've also got Disney Animation, which is comprised of a couple different experiences. You've got Turtle Talk with Crush, where you can chat with Crush the Turtle from Finding Nemo. You've got the Animation Academy, where you can learn to draw a Disney character with a Disney character artist. And you've got the Sorcerer's Workshop, which is all kinds of interactive exhibits. And these are actually really cool and very underrated. You can go to the Beast Library, you can take a quiz to figure out which character you're most like. You are most like Ursula. <gasps> It's a good time. In addition to those things, you've of course got a couple of different shops and restaurants. You've got Schmoozies, which is a, an ice cream smoothie shop a lot of people really enjoy. You've got Award Wieners, which is a hot dog spot. Of course, this is my nightmare, but I will say, according to Max and Alan, who enjoy hot dogs, these are some of the best because they actually grill the bun. So it's better than your average hot dog. I will say, I like the fries there. They're called film strip fries. They're pretty delicious. You got a couple other places to grab food. You've got the Fairfax Market, which has some snacks. You've got Studio Catering Company, which kind of has your classic theme park fair. You also, despite this not being an Avengers campus, have a big Marvel warehouse store where you can get a bunch of stuff. But none of those things are my favorite. Come on, we're gonna go to kind of a, a more underrated experience that's actually part of another experience. We are headed into the Disney Animation building, and yes, this has all these experiences I just explained, but none of them are my favorite. Just look at this room. This is my favorite. It's this gigantic lobby along this gigantic wall. They play different clips and moments from your favorite Disney movies, and as they do, they show you the concept art, that you get to hear the music. It is so beautiful, and I could sit here and have sat in here for an hour just watching all of the different clips. So to me, 
This is an absolute must do. It's kind of an underrated thing. Come in here and get some air conditioning, sit down. It's stunningly beautiful. Welcome friends, we are officially in my favorite land in Disney California Adventure, which means it's also the hardest land for me to choose just one favorite thing, but let's talk about Avengers Campus. Avengers Campus is home to all of your favorite supers, Iron Man, Black Panther, Black Panther, Captain America, Captain America, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Thor, the Guardians, Ant-Man, Wasp, and so many more. I, I gotta say, one of the things I love the most about this land is how alive it feels. The Avengers are here at their campus and they really are just walking around or you might see them up on the Quinjet. Walking into the land, I immediately saw Captain America, I saw Shuri, I saw Doctor Strange, and I just love how being in this land feels like you really are somewhere with these characters just living and breathing in their environment. As far as more set attractions throughout the land, there are some shows and entertainment featuring these different characters. You've got Avengers Assemble, which is a stunt fighting type show. I'm sorry, I just saw Shang-Chi. I, I can't. What? Sorry, Shang-Chi's my favorite and I've only ever seen him up on there. I've never been able to get close to him. Oh my gosh, and the Dormelage is coming. This land is too cool. We gotta go watch them now. Oh man, there's just so much in this land happening all the time. The small shows, again, you've got the Dora Milaje, you've got Avengers Assemble, which is stunt fighting up by the Quinjet. There's a Guardians of the Galaxy dance off. There's the Doctor Strange Mystic of the Magic Art Show. That's Alan's favorite for sure, but doesn't make my short list. The show that does make my short list though is the amazing Spider-Man. That's the stunt-tronic Spider-Man that flies over Avengers Campus and is absolutely unbelievable. Speaking of Spider-Man, we gotta talk about Web Slingers, a Spider-Man attraction. This is like Toy Story Mania, where you are doing a shooting attraction in 3D, but instead of using a pull trigger or a gun, you are using your own arms to slang those webs like Spider-Man. One makes my shortlist too. I love game style attractions and I think that is one of the best. The other main attraction here in Avengers Campus is Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. As you could tell by the looks of it, it used to be Tower of Terror. However, it's been rethemed to be helping the Guardians of the Galaxy break out. One of my favorite rides ever anywhere, so that's certainly on my shortlist as well. And what would Avengers Campus be without some good eats? For starters, you've got Pym Test Kitchen, where all the food has been hit by those Pym particles from the Ant-Man series. So things are comically large or comically small. I really like that jumbo pretzel. They've got a great cold brew. Chicken sandwich is pretty good. And attached to Pym Test Kitchen, you've got Pym Tasting Lab. This is where you can get beers and cocktails. I love the beer taps because a lot of the beers fill from the bottom to the top, like true sorcery. I assume Dr. Strange has been here. So the Pym Tasting Lab also makes my short list. But my favorite thing to eat in Avengers Campus isn't part of Pym at all. It is at the Shwarma Palace. Two different carts where you can get the Shwarma like you see at the end of the first Avengers movie. It is absolutely phenomenal. Chicken and a pita with a tzatziki sauce. So, so delicious. That also makes my short list. And it's not open quite yet, but coming soon to the Hyperion Theater, they are bringing in Rogers the Musical, which is shown in Hawkeye, which is like a parody musical about the Avengers that takes place in the Avengers universe. I can't wait to see it. Definitely gonna come back for that. But what do we choose? You know what, I feel like I gotta experience a few of these things to make sure I'm choosing the right thing. First up, grabbed a beer from the Magic Taps at Pym Tasting Lab. This is the Voodoo Ranger IPA. It's a fruity IPA. Yeah, that's pretty dang good. It's a little hoppy, a little fruity. Great one to try if you're not into IPAs because it's a good intro. Again, I don't think the Tasting Lab's gonna top the list though, but we are gonna take this beer over to something pretty impressive. Every time I see the Spider-Man Stuntronic, my brain explodes. It's absolutely incredible and so hard to believe that that's a robot. Absolutely a must do when you're in Avengers Campus, but I don't think it quite takes the top spot. 
but we're gonna continue with the Spider-Man theme and head to Web Slingers. Spider-Man Web Slingers takes place at the Web Open House, the Worldwide Engineering Brigade. Tony Stark set this up and he's got some of the brightest young minds here researching and learning. Peter Parker gets himself into a little pickle with his spider bots and you're gonna help him out. It's a pretty popular attraction, of course, a great one to use Genie Plus on. Um, also, they do have a single rider line if you don't mind splitting up with your family, but I do prefer to stay with the people I know because I love to challenge people to a little game of web slingers. Spider-Man Web Slingers is truly so fun. I'm so out of breath every time I ride it because it's literally a workout. I think it is so fun. I think it's the best shooter style game that I've been on except for Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge at Universal Studios Hollywood. Definitely a must do if you've got a Spider-Man fan, but even if you don't, it's fun just to play the game. So definitely high on my list, but you know what? I don't think it wins either. I think the winner has to be Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. It's just the best. Let's go ride it. Mission Breakout has a 44-0 inch height requirement and it's pretty popular, so I do recommend using Lightning Lane if you're purchasing Genie Plus. Otherwise, it's a good one to do first thing in the morning as it often doesn't have quite as long of a line then. Otherwise, you can wait till the end of the night, but it usually has somewhere between a 45, 50 minute line or longer. I just can't help it. I love Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout so much. It is the most fun I've ever had on a thrill ride. The plot of this attraction is that the collector, Benicio Del Toro, has captured the Guardians for part of his collection. But Rocket, of course, escapes and then asks you for help to free the rest of the Guardians. He needs your hands, people, because he's a raccoon and he doesn't have human hands. He's getting cute little raccoon paws. So you are going to help Rocket out. And then, of course, you're going to free fall because this is, again, former Tower of Terror. One of the things that's so fun about it is you don't know what song you're going to get, much like Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind in Walt Disney World. It is so cute. The Guardians also say different things. You might see different scenes. It features Baby Groot. It is so, so adorable. I love this attraction. I can't wait to see what song we get. The queue is also really fun for Marvel fans because you're going to see Easter eggs that the collector has collected, such as Stan Lee himself as Guardian Armor, the Cosmo, the Space Dog. Tons of great Easter eggs. And if you're into Easter eggs, make sure you check out our Secrets of Disney California Adventure video because there's more of those to come, especially here in Avengers Campus. <laughs> We got We Want the Funk, which is not my favorite song. My favorite song is definitely the Jackson 5 song, but it was good nonetheless. I just love that attraction. It goes up and down so much longer than Tower of Terror. I love Baby Groot. I love the Guardians in general as a franchise. It is just fun and everyone's dancing and yelling and it's a must do in my opinion. Also Groot's out, so we're gonna go see him. Avengers Campus as a whole, I could spend literally a whole day in here and I have. So everything here is great, but for me, Guardians takes the cake. Cut chow, friends, and welcome to Cars Land, the Pandora of the West. Said it before and I'll say it again, Disney has done a tremendous job making an incredible land about a film franchise I don't care about. Cars Land is, of course, themed to Disney Pixar's Cars, and it is truly one of the most beautiful theme park lands ever created, especially when you come through at night and there's all the neon signs lit up. You've got the hills back here down across Route 66. It's it's quite a sight to see. Highly recommend for everyone, especially your Cars fan. Cars Land has a couple of different attractions. First of all, you've got Luigi's Rollick and Roadsters. This is a very cute, smaller Cars ride where the cars dance uh, in tune to different musical songs. Very, very cute, especially for some younger ones. 
You've got Tomater's Junkyard Jamboree, which is the same ride vehicle as Alien Swirling Saucers in Hollywood Studios. They're going to get whipped around in the back with Tomater and his pals. It is very fun, in my opinion. I laugh hysterically every single time. I feel like a little kid. You've got some great dining here in Cars Land as well. You've got the cozy cones, which each cone has different treats, like different popcorn, churros, chili-filled bread cones. The main dining location here is Flo's V8 Cafe. You're gonna get fried chicken, some other kind of diner-style food, super, super cute. And then, of course, there's great merchandise locations here themed to cars. Another great thing in the attraction is that you can meet the cars themselves. Lightning McQueen and Tomator drive through the land, making them some of the coolest meet and greets anywhere. But despite all those fabulous things, despite the amazing ambiance and the neon signs and how beautiful it is in this land, this land was actually the easiest decision I had to make all day because it's the home to Radiator Springs Racers, which is arguably one of the best, if not the best attractions in the entire park. Radiator Springs Racers has a 44-0 inch height requirement and it is part dark ride, part race, and all puts test track to shame because it uses the same ride technology. It is super duper cute. You are headed to Ornament Valley with Lightning McQueen, Tomater, and the rest of the cars. The first portion is gonna drive you through a part outdoor, part indoor uh, slow ride where it's gonna come face to face with some of your favorite characters from the show. Then you are gonna head into a race against another car and you really can win or lose, just like in real racing. This attraction is stunningly beautiful. Highly recommend riding it at twice if you can ride it during the day and at night. It's a very different experience. It is so much fun. Let's get to it. I've been talking for long enough. Now being one of the best rides in the park, you can imagine that it gets a very long line. They do have single rider. It's also a fancy ride, meaning if you want to skip the line, it's not part of Genie Plus. You'll have to pay an individual fee. My Disney World friends, keep in mind that Genie Plus and Fancy Rides work a little bit different out here at Disneyland than they do in Walt Disney World. We actually did a video comparing the two and break down all the rules and how to best use it on both coasts. So check that out if you're planning on using Genie. Welcome to Pacific Wharf. And this land was another one that was a little tricky to pick something. Why? Because most of Pacific Wharf is good, but not amazing quick service restaurants. As far as attraction goes, you've got the Boot and Bakery tour where you can see how they make sourdough bread, which I will admit I do enjoy. But beyond that, it's mostly just eating. You've got Ghirardelli if you want some ice cream. You have the Pacific Wharf kind of food counter-esque area that we went to in a Winter Picks dinner episode, where you've got Cocina Cucamonga, which is Tex-Mex. You've got Lucky Fortune Cookery, which is Americanized Chinese food. Uh, you've got the Pacific Wharf Cafe, where you can get, I will say, delicious sourdough bread bowls full of soup. That was one of my options, as well as a couple of different places to get drinks, craft beers. There's also the Sonoma Terrace, which is a wine terrace. Remember what I said Michael Eisner's plan was to make California Adventure so great that you didn't want to visit all the other places in California? Well, this is the wine country part of that. I almost picked Sonoma Terrace. I almost picked the uh, Pacific Wharf to get those bread bowls. And then I remembered, I'm a magic key holder now. And they turned this beautiful rooftop terrace into a magic key holder exclusive place to get wine and to get apps and snacks. So obviously that's going to be my favorite. Let's go. The Magic Key Terrace sits atop Sonoma Terrace and it actually has these beautiful views overlooking the park. There's a variety of seating. In my experience, it does get pretty popular, especially on the weekends when a lot of Magic Key holders are able to come to the park. They do take reservations, which I would recommend getting, or there is a walk-up list, uh, which I personally haven't had much luck with, again, because I'm usually here on the weekends. Taking a look at the menu, of course, there's a variety of cocktails and wines. A lot of the wines that they feature are part of the Disney family of wines. So like Skywalker Vineyards, that's George Lucas's vineyard. Fest Parker Riesling. Fest Parker's the original Davy Crockett. 
got a variety of different drinks and they are often named after things in the park. So like drop in if you dare, that would be a Tower of Terror reference. Heimlich's Choo Choo Juice, that's a nod to Heimlich's Choo Choo Train, which isn't here any longer. They have a variety of craft beer as well. Then they do have some light bites. They've got a Bountiful Valley charcuterie, which opening day, one of the lands was Bountiful Valley, which was a farm, because who doesn't want to go to a theme park and go to a farm? They've got a Monte Cristo corn dog, which is modeled after the famous Monte Cristo sandwich, flatbread, churros, a couple kids items. Now, of course, this is a Magic Key exclusive terrace. They are going to check for proof of a Magic Key before you come up here. However, a Magic Key holder is able to bring three guests with them for four people total. So if you know a Magic Key holder or you are a Magic Key holder, you are able to bring some friends up. Cocktails have arrived. I got the Constoga cocktail. I looked it up. Constoga is the type of wagon that was widely used in the westward expansion. Makes sense we're in California after all. This is made with mezcal, Topo Chico mineral water, lime juice, and a prickly pear syrup. I asked if they could go a little lighter on that syrup because, you know, I don't like sickly sweet drinks. And then we also have the mint julep cocktail. That's what my mom ordered. It's got bourbon, apricot liqueur, agave, lemon juice, soda water, and a sprig of mint. Behind the scenes, we went to Disneyland yesterday and my mom tried a mint julep with the beignets and she was like, oh, let's get the boozy version. So here we are. Cheers. That is delightful. I was between this and the Manhattan and I asked our server and she said to go with this one and that it would be refreshing and perfect on a nice day on the terrace. And it really is. It's got a tahini salted rim. It's very refreshing because of that Topo Chico. A little bit of sweet from that prickly pear. I had her have the syrup and then I love the smokiness of the mezcal. That is a really delicious and beautiful drink. I would certainly order that again. I'm just taking a little sip of this mint julep too. That's so good. It is, you can certainly taste the bourbon, which I am a big fan of, but it also has that light refreshing lime juice and the mint and the soda water. It somewhat tastes like the one in Disneyland, except for less sweet because it doesn't have the lemonade, um, but it's got the little bit, slight bit of bourbon on it. Both of these are really good cocktails. The first of our food items here is the Quesa Birria flatbread. So it's similar to a birria taco, but in the fashion of a flatbread, you've got that chili braised beef, the Oaxaca cheese, salsa verde, fresh radish, myco cilantro, and then the consomme that you dip it in. I love when it comes with the lime to squeeze on it as well. This looks fantastic. That is delightful. I love how many things you can get in the form of birria here in Disneyland. You can get tacos, of course, over at um, Cocina Cucamonga. You can get the grilled cheese in Disneyland at the Jolly Holiday, but this flatbread is excellent as well. The crust is really well done. It's got a little bit of crisp on the outside. It's got that nice kind of salty, nutty Oaxaca cheese, but the real star is the beef. It is so juicy. It is marinated splendidly. You've got the radishes and the cilantro. Dip it in that fresh consomme. I like the lime juice as well. There's a little bit of heat in that salsa verde. Nothing too spicy, but if you are heat adverse, just so you are aware, that is delightful. If you like birria tacos, definitely give this a whirl. And here is the beautiful charcuterie board. The cheese beer was made by a blind nun in a basement. You have an espresso soaked white cheddar, which obviously I'm very excited about. Also a wine soaked white cheddar a Gouda and a Monterey Jack. And then I'm very excited about this one. It is made out of goat's cheese, goat's milk, but it's prepared like a blue cheese. So I'm excited to give that one a whirl. You've also got some prosciutto, salami, grapes, figs, and a little bit of a pate, some crostinis. And our server already said, if we need more of the crostinis, just let her know. This is a beautiful spread right here. And I love the little magic key emblem in the charcuterie board. I'm just gonna sample the unique cheeses because obviously, prosciutto tastes like prosciutto, etc. But here first is that goat cheese made into a blue cheese version. It's not quite as funky as a normal blue cheese. It's certainly less funky than the blue cheese that you get, say, in the cheese board that comes in France and Epcot. It definitely kind of has that tanginess that you associate with goat cheese as well. Phenomenal. Here is the wine soaked white cheddar. Tastes like a delicious sharp white cheddar. A little bit of sweetness because of the wine. Nothing that unusual flavor-wise, but it looks very cool, very fitting for here. And last but not least, the one I'm most excited about, the espresso-soaked white cheddar. It's perfect. My two truest loves, coffee and cheese, have finally come together. It's perfect. It's got a little of that bitterness, that richness from the coffee, and then it's a sharp white cheddar. 
fantastic. I know the Magic Key Terrace probably isn't a super fair pick because not everyone can access it, but if you can't come to the Magic Key Terrace, I do like Sonoma below. I do like going to the food court and all of the Pacific Wharf section over this way is being turned into San Francisco, San Francisco, San Francisco, San Francisco, which is the fictional city that combines San Francisco and Tokyo, Japan together in Big Hero 6. That theming is going in on the Pacific Wharf section over there, so I'm really excited to see that. That could change my answer, but for now, giving the chance to luxuriate with a beautiful view, great drinks and great apps, what more could you want? The next land, Pixar Pier, one of my favorite lands in a Disney park because I'm a diehard Pixar fan. Of course, Buzz Lightyear is my favorite character. I love the Toy Story franchise, but, th but there are so many amazing stories and franchises and characters within Pixar. Who doesn't love Monsters, Inc. and The Incredibles and Ratatouille and Inside Out and Nemo and Bugs Life? It, like, ugh. I just love Pixar and this whole land is oh so cute. When the park opened, this was Paradise Pier, so it's kind of themed to a turn of the century boardwalk style. I'm so glad they renovated it to be Pixar themed, so everywhere you look, there are little nods to Toy Story characters and films, even shorts like Knick Knack, one of the first Pixar shorts has its own merchandise shop here. It's just the cutest. It's gonna be a tough decision, I think. There are a couple of attractions, places to eat on Pixar Pier. Let's start with the big one. You've got the Pixar Pal Around. Now, it used to be called Mickey's Fun Wheel, and this is your Ferris wheel. There are swinging and non-swinging cars. The swinging cars are an absolute nightmare. You may not think they're moving that quickly looking at it from the ground, but I assure you they are flying and they are swinging very, very high. Absolutely not my favorite thing in this land, although, it's kind of fun for the screams to do it at least once. Oh, no, 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 no. Also, over on the far end of Pixar Pier, you've got the Inside Out Emotional Whirlwind. This is one of those kind of balloon flyer attractions. Very cute, good for the kiddos, people that can't ride some of the more intense rides in this park, but definitely not a must-do for most people. You've got Bing Bong Sweet Shop, which is a cute candy shop featuring Bing Bong from Inside Out. You have got some of the boardwalk-style games, which are all themed to different Pixar shorts or Pixar characters, which is really cute. Pixar Pier is the home of Toy Story Mania here. You do have Mr. Potato Head on the outside of the queue, which I think is great because in Disney World, you can only see him if you go in the standby queue. However, the ride is basically the exact same. And as much as I love that 3D shooter style game, I can ride it in Disney World, so it's not gonna top my list, but I do think it's a must do when you're coming with families. You've got Jesse's Critter Carousel, which is a cute family-friendly carousel featuring critters from Woody's Roundup. Got a couple of different food stands. My favorite, besides the Duke Kaboom roasty toasty popcorn turner, I think the cutest thing is the Poultry Palace, which is a nod to one of the Toy Story shorts, Small Fry. A couple more little shops and places to get food. I do really like the uh, Abominable Snowman's Treat, where you can get yellow snow, but don't worry, it's lemon. The headliner attraction in Pixar Pier is the Incredicoaster. This used to be called California Screamin'. It's a boardwalk style wooden roller coaster, but it's been rethemed to be the Incredibles. It's super duper cute. Basically, Jack Jack the baby has gotten away and all the Incredibles are trying to catch him. So each time you go through those red tunnels, you're seeing a different character on the way to get Jack Jack. That is certainly one of the top two things I love the most about Pixar Pier. In the top spot, running for sure. And then in addition to all these headliners, you've got different character meet and greets, cute little details all over that just scream Pixar. It's an adorable land, but what is the winner? And the winner is brunch. That's right, of all of the attractions, characters, and theming in Pixar Pier, I'm picking a restaurant, but you can't blame me. I'm a millennial, so I'm really picking brunch. Lamplight Lounge is a sit-down restaurant. It actually used to be a character dining experience with hosted by Ariel, so it had the princesses, but now it is all Pixar themed. There's Pixar concept art. There is Pixar designs everywhere in the chandeliers and in the tile work. It is so cute in here as a diehard Pixar fan. Plus, on the weekends they serve brunch. The food is fantastic, so it was kind of a hard pick because I love Incredicoaster, but brunch wins every time. Walking into Lamplight Lounge, you've got framed concept art on the walls, but my favorite thing is this amazing light fixture that's full of different concept art. Of course, my favorite thing to look at is Bruce, the shark from Finding Nemo, but I'm seeing characters from Inside Out, Coco, Monsters, Inc., Up. I could stare at this thing all day. I believe Buzz is on here. We gotta find Buzz before we go to my table. Buzz, there he is. 
so dapper. With a view like this, how can Lamplight Lounge brunch not be on top? There's very cute indoor seating, but if you can, when the weather's nice, sit outside, you get this incredible view of Pixar Pier into Paradise Gardens. It's just amazing. You can watch Incredicoaster go by from here, which obviously, again, should be on your must-do list, but oh, I love it so much. Taking a quick look at the brunch menu. They've got the chilaquiles. Those are my favorite thing on the brunch menu. They're basically breakfast nachos. I had those last time Alan Max and I came here. Um, they've got a brunch burger, a crab and potato uh, benedict, French toast, avocado toast. They also have a variety of cocktails, including that uh, very visually appealing mimosa flight. I'm trying something new today though. And then during the day, Disney California Adventure actually has one of the largest California craft beer menus of anywhere. Um, so they've got tons of different craft beers, which I love that you can get local stuff all around the park. Uh, they have got incredible lobster nachos. That's one of their signature dishes during lunch and dinner. They've got burgers, other munchies. The food here is phenomenal. And clearly the views are why you come. Y'all already know I'm a drink goblin, which can only mean one thing at brunch three beverages. But look at the view with the three beverages today. This is a good three beverage situation. You always have to have one to hydrate, one to caffeinate, and one just for fun. The one just for fun today is the Sunrise Spectacular. It's basically a breakfast old fashioned. So it's got Maker's Mark bourbon, tropical juices, agave, and some bitters. Cheers. Ooh, that is so good, oh my gosh. Now I did ask them to go a little bit lighter than they normally would on the juices because you probably know I don't like drinks that are too sweet and it's a perfect breakfast old fashioned because nothing says good morning like bourbon at 930. But because they went light on the juices, you can definitely taste the bourbon, but it still tastes tropical and breakfasty, not super sweet, but it is fun if you like a breakfast beverage, but you don't want to do something sweet like the mimosa flight. I would definitely get that again on my next brunch over the mimosa flight. But for your Instagram, you should get the mimosa flight. Brunch is served. Decided to mix it up this time and go with the brunch burger. So you've got a burger with American cheese, a sunny side up egg, a hash brown patty, roasted green chili, lettuce, caramelized onions, and a paprika aioli. Toasted on an Amish bun, it comes with fruit, which is watermelon right now, which is great, one of my favorite fruits. I'm so excited about this. I love a runny gooey egg. Oh yeah. Oh my God, I love a runny egg. <laughs> Yum. Definitely not dainty eats here at the Lamplight Lounge. Trying to figure out the best way to tackle this. Oh my gosh, yum, that is a phenomenal burger. The burger patty itself is juicy and rich and delicious. I had him cooked medium. I normally go medium rare, but he said medium is preferred for the burger to hold up to all the things. It's great. I love the crunch from the hash brown patty. The paprika aioli is fantastic. Um, I also like the little bit of smokiness from that roasted green chili. And of course the gooey runny egg. It's certainly a messy brunch, but it is delicious. I think I still prefer the chilaquiles just because I love that flavor profile. I love the house made chips. Luckily though, my breakfast guest has them. So I get both. It's the best of both worlds. It's my mom. You really can't go wrong here for any meal, but especially to start your day here with a cocktail and a coffee and this beautiful view and the food, phenomenal. Definitely, definitely a favorite. We have made it to our final land here in Disney California Adventure. We are in Paradise Gardens Park. Similar to the original Paradise Pier, Paradise Gardens Park has kind of that old timey boardwalk feel. You'll see that throughout the attractions. This is where you're gonna find the Silly Symphony Swings, which I do quite enjoy. They're unfortunately under refurbishment right now, but they're that kind of classic carnival style swinging of uh, swings that's themed to the band concert, the Mickey Short. You got Goofy Sky School, 42 inch height requirement. This is one of those cat and mouse style roller coasters where you almost go over the edge, but you don't. It's a good kitty coaster. It's a fun ride if there's not too long of a line and you've got Genie Plus. I personally have very fond memories riding it with Max and Alan and us all laughing hysterically. You've got Jumpin' Jellyfish, 40 inch height requirement. It's kind of an up and down, gives you a very pretty view, but nothing spectacular. You've also got the Golden Zephyr, which is just kind of a roundabout rocket style attraction. And then you have the Little Mermaid, Ariel's Undersea Adventure, which is 
practically the same one as in Magic Kingdom. It's that slow, dark ride where you board a Claymobile and go under the sea with Ariel to see the story of the Little Mermaid. Here at Paradise Gardens Park, you've got a few dining options as well. You've got Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta, quick service. You've got Paradise Garden Grill, which has a variety of items, sandwiches, sometimes they do tacos, different things. And then you've got my very, very close runner-up. You know what time it is. It's cheese on a stick time. That's right, one of my top picks here in Paradise Gardens Park, the Corn Dog Castle, specifically for cheddar cheese on a stick, which is quite literally a block of cheddar cheese fried in corn dog batter. It's the greatest snack, maybe of all time. Who's to say? Mm, that's good. It's a little sweetness because of the batter, and then it just tastes like cheese. I love it so much. It would take a lot to outdo cheese on a stick in this land, so it needs to be something pretty wonderful and pretty colorful. Y'all, as I was picking up my delectable cheese on a stick, I had to place yet another mobile order for the Corn Dog Castle because I saw the coolest placard in the window, and it's for this glow cube. And I'm not even really like a souvenir collectibles person. I think glow cubes and popcorn buckets and sippers and stuff are cute, but, but I don't collect that many of them just because they take up a lot of space and they're just not my personal favorite collectible. But I had to get this star, and I'm sure a lot of you are like, of all the collectibles, why this star? I talked about this briefly in the Disneyland Secrets video, but this star, if you look at it closely, is uneven. This side is shorter, and that is a nod to Imagineer John Hinch. He was one of the lead Imagineers at Disneyland. He was an Imagineer in the Magic Kingdom. He is famous for being an architect. Cinderella Castle, Space Mountain, uh, and whenever he would draw his designs that had stars, he would draw his little stars, and they would always be uneven. So as a nod to him, when they were decorating Sleeping Beauty Castle for the 100th, they made the stars uneven, and the fact that they made a glow cube out of it coolest thing ever so i obviously had to get this i'm sure you guessed by that not so subtle pun world of color is truly my favorite thing in paradise gardens park this is such a unique disney california adventure nighttime show that features water projections and fire and music and color it is an absolutely incredible show for sure a must do especially right now they've got world of color one which is themed to the 100th anniversary so it includes marvel and star wars as well as disney and pixar characters it's got walt disney in it now world of color if you'd like to see the show you're going to want to join the virtual queue to reserve your spot in the viewing area there are a couple other options as well you can do a dessert party you can do a dining package I am treating my mom to a dessert party tonight since she's not seen the show. Super excited for that. You do get a plate of some desserts and cheeses. I quite enjoy the dessert party personally. It's definitely a little bit more of a splurge. However, after a long day in the parks, it's nice to have a seat for the show and a guaranteed great view and a drink. And I can't wait to see it. My greatest reward is to have the, the public appreciate and accept what I've done all these years. That, that is a great reward. One man, one dream. 100 years ago, Walt Disney set ripples of happiness and imagination in motion. He showed us how little ripples can become great waves. It just Takes one.
just been a sort of dress rehearsal. We're just getting started. It's so good. I love World of Color. I think it is the most beautiful show. And I love this variation of it. They use so many unique characters and even when they're using characters that they use a lot they're using different pieces of the music like the part they use from Lion King is my favorite Lion King music. They've got Star Wars. The Star Wars part is amazing. They make the water look like lightsabers to start it off. At one point they make it look like Pixar Pal around the fun wheel is the Death Star. They do hyperspeed really cool when they make the, the fun wheel a portal for the Avengers to come out of. It's such a beautiful show and of course it starts and ends with Walt which is gonna make me a puddle every time and I I truly love the story of World of Color which is one person can make a difference and it's great whether you see it doing a dessert party which again is a little bit more of a splurge or a dining package or just preserving a, a free spot in the virtual queue and standing uh, wherever you gotta see this show. Do note the second show is usually less crowded, which means if you don't get a spot in the virtual queue, you may be able to still grab a decent spot with that one, but do, do try for that virtual queue. Well, friends, that is a very emotional end to a beautiful day here in Disney California Adventure. I really, really love this park more every time I come. I think it is such a fun park with such fun characters and IP and the lands are amazing. And they've got some of the best attractions and food in any Disney park, in my opinion. So I had a great time. Definitely let me know what your favorite things are here in Disney California adventure. Make sure to check out the other episodes of this series. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come hang out with us on Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it's been magical. Now go watch The Secrets of Disney California Adventure. Bye!